obviously people make music that is influenced by what we hear. So when you talk about a group like Zed's Dead, you hear the bass lines, you hear the drum and bass and the breakbeats that exploded here in the 90s, the huge raga influence, UK funky and the whole UK bounce stuff. You hear Toronto. There was a book that was written in the 60s by Jane Jacobs called The Death and Life of Great American Cities, and it was all about how when things are homogenous, the place becomes dead, and but when the city grows organically, like immigrants come and they set up a store in front of their house and they and a push cart and all that, you have life in the city. It was like a big multicultural melting pot. Hey, Jerry. Hey, how, how you doing? doing? Not bad. Good to see you. Hey, my name is Jerry, and this is Elliot, and uh, we are Zed's Dads. We made the choice to live downtown rather than a suburban sort of thing where everybody's similar background. So Toronto is a city that has so many different neighborhoods, communities, people who do interact on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, people from all over the world bringing their music with them. That was a great inspiration for uh, Dylan and, and, of course, Zach. some pictures we can talk about. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. The old garage. When I was in high school, my parents let me use the garage in the back yard of my house to kind of hang out. Having a, a safe kind of meeting place where the, the kids could hang out and be themselves was really key in their development. This is one of the first pieces that uh, I was allowed to do. It was in Dylan's garage. It says real. We weren't really close friends at the time, but sort of over the course of me painting this, we started like showing each other music and... Uh, yeah, we connected. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I let him pretty much practice the garage <laughs> on my wall. I think I told him that I had done that before. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I think you lied to me. Yes. <laughs> we had been making music together for like five years already as mass productions. And I think for both of us, we knew that it was something that we were going to do no matter what, and as we got further and further along, the more it became like, you know, our whole life. I used to come here and talk to Jerry about what was going on, and like, it was all new to me. It was like, what? My son had gotten into a great college and he was studying right. radio and television arts, and you know, I thought, you know, I'm envious of my son. He's in the best course that you can get it, but he doesn't seem to want to do it. He wants to do this. And I was asking Jerry, and Jerry said, they're gonna go big. Dragonette that started off really kind of isolated. We didn't really know anybody who was making music like us. When we left Toronto 10 years ago, everything was underground and everything was like hidden. When I was younger and just starting to actually play out, there weren't many platforms for people to kind of use at the time to make what we did known. And Zach and Dylan were some of the first people that I even met that were doing a similar thing. We were just outsiders, so we started our own thing because we weren't really being embraced by the established scene. Bass Mentality was one of the, the first platforms for a lot of local artists and international artists to come through to the city and kind of show what they do. 
we kind of just wanted a place to kind of hone our skills and be able to play free of promoters or kind of care or any of that stuff. And just right at that time, it was like a crazy nexus of all sorts of things happened. People were ready for like a new sound in Toronto, I think. Right when the whole EDM producer DJ phenomenon was kind of growing, they were, they were there. In terms of Toronto, they were some of the only people doing it. I kept hearing the name Zed Dead, you know, like these guys, they're like super buzzy and like like just something's happening there and like all their stuff's going up online. And as a promoter, you know, we just kind of saw these guys and we're like, this thing's really been amazing. I was hired to be the resident photographer for this mentality. I come from Venezuela, so when I got to Toronto, I had been working for so long, but Base Mentality is what really put me on the map. I met so many people through Base Mentality and so many DJs that were blowing up. Like I met Skrillex through Base Mentality and like they blow and like, everybody. It was just a crazy, crazy moment. Moonrise is our Toronto-based dance crew that's that influenced our movement. Like that just made me glad to be from Toronto, you know? All of a sudden it feels like anything can happen here and on the scale of any other great city. Yeah. Zed's dead. Asked if I wanted to write on a song. I was nervous just saying, yes, I'm gonna make this track because I don't know what to expect. And obviously I can't not do it because I might not write something that I'm happy with. But we started bouncing stuff back and forth a bit, and I don't know, it just, it just worked, and I'm happy with it. Today, we've just been like getting the, the final thing polished up, sprinkling the fairy dust on it. She's just got a wicked voice, and works really well for the concept of the album. Northern Lights, the dynamic, of having something that's really like beautiful and, uh, and vibrant that comes out of like the darkness. We just always wanted to make a cohesive album. This was important to us to do, and we spent a really long time perfecting and crafting this. <laughs> we had big offers on the table for the album specifically, you know, and we just decided that we wanted to put the guys in a position where they would own their music. They'd be in control of it, you know, 20 years from now. The way that we have to do things, which is pretty much DIY. And that's been how it was since the beginning. We picked the planetarium for the listening party. I mean, obviously, Northern Lights, gazing into space while listening to the album seems super appropriate. This is our most ambitious visual plan yet, is for this album. We're rolling out an entire live visual set that's gonna be synced to every single song on the show. It is a bit nerve-wracking because this is the first time that we've really played our album for a group of people. We're, we're very serious about being the only cooks in the kitchen when it comes to our stuff, so it should be interesting. We're surrounded by good friends, family. It's a pleasure to have everyone here. We're all here to celebrate Zach and Dylan and this label that we're launching. So, to Zach and Dylan. One of the challenges with Dead Beats, the label, or doing anything outside me and Zach is there's a lot more variables. You don't know what it's gonna be like. We feel like Dead Beats should be an expansion of the Zed's Dead world. Starting a record label in the year 2016 is obviously not a good idea. The challenge is that it's a risk, but it's important for them to be able to invest in artists and give them a platform, build a whole scene around them.
the team that Zed's Dead have around them right now is probably one of the strongest teams in Toronto. And I think they're very good enablers at letting people who are passionate do what they do best. How do you evolve with the music and adapt your career? And I think that's kind of where Deadbeats is. It's like the evolution of Zed's Dead. It's like Zed's Dead growing up. The guys are out there in the world now. They're starting to leave their legacy. Deadbeats is just going to continue on. Yeah. It's exciting to think that Toronto's going to have something like this. Yeah. I think I'd like the conversation about Toronto to, to stay in the realm of diversity and see that he's got all sorts of stuff coming out of it. I mean, the hip hop scene got a real voice recently, but that's only one of the voices that comes from the city, right? Like, there's, there's a lot of other ones. Yeah, and just make people who are from Toronto feel like they're from a cool place. Like, I think when we were growing up, we thought like New York was all cool and stuff, but you know, Toronto's dope. with communities, with social spaces, with people looking forward, with people looking to support one another or to see what we can grow together. Really, it's about where our brains and ears take us. Who knows what the future holds? And that's what's exciting.